Aunt Julia Child, welcome to my house. What fun we're going to have baking all kinds of incredible cakes, pies, and breads right here in my own kitchen. Today, Norman Love, executive pastry chef for Ritz Carlton Hotels, adds a dollop of his own special artistry to a classic show pastry as he teaches us how to make these chocolate cinnamon beignets. Join us on Baking with Julia. I have here in my hand a shoe, C-H-O-U-X, or a little pastry cabbage. The pat a shoe, you open it up and it's hollow, and you can fill it with anything that you want, and it's a very easy pastry to make. Here's a chocolate one that has a beautiful caramelized banana, and you wouldn't think that these were made from the same dough, and you're gonna make the dough, Norman. I'm going to make a classical pat de choux recipe mm -hmm. with a little bit of a creative twist to it. Good. So if we can, we'd like to start. Fine. Okay, we're going to take a two or three quart um, saucepan. We're going to add a half a cup of water. Mm -hmm. We're also going to add a half a cup of milk. And you can use any liquid you want for, to, for making one of these. That's what's so wonderful about this recipe is that you're able to, um, any fruit puree, any, any fruit juice, um, entirely water, entirely milk, mm -hmm. to create different flavors. In entirely what we're about bourbon to do. whiskey, for instance. <laughs> that would be interesting. That would be an interesting shoe. Um, we're going to add six tablespoons or three quarters stick mm -hmm. of butter. And that would be sweet butter, unsalted butter. Oh, plain unsalted. Then we're going to add one and a half tablespoons of cocoa powder, mm -hmm. a teaspoon mm -hmm. of cinnamon. And also, uh, I'd like to put two tablespoons of sugar and about a quarter teaspoon of salt, a good pinch of salt, just yeah. to help bring out some of the mm -hmm. flavors. It always does with, and with chocolate too, doesn't it? Most definitely. And then we're going to take the casserole and we're going to put it onto the to the, to the stove, and we're going to bring this whole mixture to a boil. Mm -hmm. If you would, Julia, could you, could you stir that for me? Okay. Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to crack six large, large eggs. Okay, and also I need one cup of an all-purpose flour. Okay, Julia, so it's, it's, it's starting to boil, the milk and the water, mm -hmm. our butter, our cinnamon, our cocoa powder, a little salt and sugar. Okay, I'm going to add and always add flour all at, all at one time. While it's boiling. While it's boiling, and we're gonna carefully stir in the flour. Mm -hmm. You're gonna to start to notice, you start to notice some of that lumping, but as we continue to incorporate the flour with our, our mixture, mm -hmm. those lumps will work their way out and we're gonna form basically a roux. Get a very, very stiff mixture. I think it's important that we continue to cook for 30 seconds or one minute over to over the fire until it starts to form a ball and actually leaves a skin on the bottom of the sauce mm -hmm. pot. Once it's completely formed into a ball, we're able to remove that end from the fire. Mm -hmm. I'd like to transfer into a bowl. A bigger one. Yeah. Yes, a bigger bowl so that we make it a little bit easier for us to incorporate our whole eggs. So by adding one or two eggs um, at a time, we're able to slowly start incorporating the eggs. It always looks as though they weren't going to go in, doesn't it? Yeah, at first it does, but if you continue, the mixture will slowly break down, the eggs will slowly break down the mixture and will start to absorb the moisture of the eggs. And we'll add one more egg. No. Once you get the egg incorporated, it goes a bit faster, doesn't it? Yes, it does. No. So once each egg is incorporated into the shoe, one more can be added until we're looking for a fairly soft consistency, but one that will still hold its shape. Mm -hmm. And we're very close here. It still has a lovely smell of that cinnamon. I think it's one of chocolate. my favorite cinnamon and chocolate together. Yeah, I think lovely. it gives such a wonderful aromatic taste. So I think that the consistency here that we look for is that as we touch the spoon to the mixture, the mixture mm -hmm. comes slowly up and then mm -hmm. falls, but almost holds uh, its that's shape. That's a nice... So, then you may not need this egg at all. That's right. So I think right now I'm, I'm, I'm happy with the consistency mm -hmm. of, of the shoe paste. Just to peek up, mm -hmm. bring a peek, and mm -hmm. it will slowly fall back into mm -hmm. itself. And I think this is a consistency now. 
Now, at this point, you could make the little puffs if you wanted to. Absolutely. The shoe paste is finished at this point. Mm -hmm. So prior to this creative twist that we're going to do, you could either take teaspoonfuls and put onto a, a lined pan, mm -hmm. or you can bag out, bag with a pastry Good. bag, okay. small shoe or eclairs. And now you're going to take it so we're going to a now, step further. We're going to yeah. refrigerate the mix, mm -hmm. and then we're going to incorporate some more flour into the mix by All kneading. Right. Can you I'll put that put in, the in the fridge? fridge. Thank you okay. very much. Julia, I have a half of mixture of refrigerated dough. It has a nice shiny look to it. Okay, so I'm going to take some flour mm -hmm. and we're going to lightly flour our surface. We're going to take this dough, this very well chilled pate choux, and slowly start to incorporate the flour. And we're looking for a consistency that's pliable and mm -hmm. able to be handled. So by working slowly on the surface, so I'm just working the flour. Oh, I feel that. It's still, it's still very soft. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, you couldn't do much with it now, could you? It's, it's so soft that it would be very, very difficult mm -hmm. to work with. I'm going to take a little bit more flour. So now that the dough is starting to become pliable, I'm going to need a little bit more flour into mm -hmm. it and try to develop a little bit of the gluten in the flour so that the dough has a little bit more substance to it, mm -hmm. a little bit more strength to the, oh. to the shoe. It's becoming very pliable now. As you can see, I'm able to start to knead the dough. I'm just incorporating the final flour that's on the table, and I'm sure that will be sufficient. I want to feel that again, though. Okay. And still, if you hold it, that's still sticky. But you can work with it. Yes, know. we're going to lightly flour our surface. At this point, I want to try to use as little flour as possible, just to prevent sticking. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take my rolling pin, and we're going to try to roll out the dough as thin as possible. The thinner the pastry, the mm -hmm. lighter the pastry. Yeah. And it's important that we, each time we roll our dough out, that we move our dough. And we take a, little little bit, stick. Exactly, yeah. take mm -hmm. a little bit more flour. Yeah. But you should carefully handle the dough. Not yeah. a lot of pressure when you put the dough, because the dough is very soft mm -hmm. and tender. And each time, I'm trying to relax the dough. Mm -hmm. And roll out another piece. OK, once we get a very thin consistency, we're going to cut our discs that are eventually going to be turned into mm -hmm. our beignet. So what we do, just carefully cutting the pastry, and we're going to place those in the refrigerator in just a moment. That is very, you really have to handle that very carefully, don't you? I think it's, it's just easily placed in your hand and just let it slide right off your hand onto the pan. Mm -hmm. So we've, we've cut out four of each, different styles of beignet. I think I'm going to take my dough, and I'm going to, and it, again, the scraps can be just kneaded back mm -hmm. together. And we'll roll out one more time. And I'd like to cut some decoration. And we can make it right out of the dough. Mm -hmm. That'd be great. So what I'd like to do is just by cutting the edge, maybe cut a triangle, just some kind of height, maybe a little bit of decoration mm -hmm. for to accompany our beignet. I'll make some cuts into this. Lay these pieces down just to refrigerate on the side. So once the pieces are cut, we're ready no. for the refrigerator. So a piece of plastic, just lightly covering it, just to keep some of the air off of it. Mm -hmm. Keep maybe from forming a skin on top yeah. of, the, of the pastry. And it's just placed in the refrigerator for about an hour or so wow. until it's nice and cool and able yeah. to be handled. Good. Okay, the next step we're going to do is be making the filling for our chocolate cinnamon beignet. Go ahead. I'd like to first start with pastry cream. I think it gives a nice smooth creaminess mm -hmm. to the inside of the of those beignets. I'd like to put, of course, beautiful fresh vanilla bean. In this recipe, we can put about a half. I usually split my vanilla bean open, mm -hmm. open it a bit, and then take the back of the paring knife. Take the back of the paring knife and scrape all that wonderful flavor, and then put everything inside to my pastry cream. The seeds are where we're going to get all that wonderful flavor. We're going to allow that to boil. Yeah. In the meantime, I have three egg yolks in this bowl. Mm -hmm. I'm going to add to that a third cup of sugar. With a wire whisk, I'd like to immediately start to incorporate the yolks and sugar. The sugar has a tendency to burn the egg yolks. So it's important to just agitate the yolks yeah. a little bit. Then I'm going to add um, two tablespoons of cornstarch. That's the thickening. 
And you just really want to well incorporate your yolks and sugar. Mm -hmm. You don't want to really build any, any volume of air into this mixture mm -hmm. either. So as we start to boil, the first thing I would like to do is to take the, the vanilla bean out of my mm -hmm. mixture, just very carefully. And you're going to leave and the seeds in. And leave huh? the seeds in. As the milk begins to boil, I'm going to add very slowly, continuously stirring, about half the liquid. Mm -hmm. And it's important to stir that mixture as you're adding the hot boiling milk so that you don't burn the egg mm -hmm. yolks. Or scramble them. Or scramble oh. them, right. We're going to go back to our boiling mixture. And again, constantly stirring. Mm -hmm. Add our stream of egg yolks and sugar, cornstarch. As your mixture thickens, you stir more vigorously mm -hmm. to ensure that you stay a nice smooth consistency. Mm -hmm. I'm going to remove this from the fire. Yeah. I'm going to take a clean glass bowl, rubber spatula. I'm going to take that creme patissier. To avoid mm -hmm. any kind of skin, I usually take a piece of butter and just lightly take the butter to the surface mm -hmm. of the pastry mm -hmm. cream. And this will help to prevent any formation of a skin mm -hmm. being formed on the surface. We're putting a piece of plastic over top, keep the air off. We we'll put this into the refrigerator, and again, this can be made a day ahead of time. Okay. And put it in. I'd like to continue with the roasted walnut sauce that oh, we good. serve with our beignet. Yeah. If you could turn that fire on for me, please. We're going to start with uh, one pint of heavy cream. One pint, two cups. Two cups. We're also going to add one stick or eight tablespoons of butter. This again is. Unsalted sweet butter. That's right. Yeah. Also, I'm going to add a half a cup of sugar and a half a cup of ground or finely chopped roasted walnuts. So basically, I take the walnuts, walnut halves, I place them in a 350 degree oven for about 10 minutes until they're mm. nice and lightly, lightly brown. It just gives them a little more taste. Exactly. It? If they the get roaster. too dark, you almost have a bitter taste yeah. to them afterwards. Mm -hmm. I take the walnuts and I usually put them on a flat surface, mm -hmm. either with a rolling pin or a knife or even a food processor on pulse. Mm -hmm. You're able to just coarsely ground yeah. so that we're able to see the nuts in the sauce. Yes, you don't want a powder. No. And then lastly, I put one tablespoon of walnut oil. And that, to help. you have to be careful it doesn't get rancid. Keep them in the refrigerator, I think mm -hmm. it will yeah. extend its life. And I like to put just a little pinch of salt just to help yeah. bring out some of that walnut mm -hmm. flavor. I just like to mix my sauce carefully to ensure that the sugar is you know, well distributed through mm -hmm. so that we don't have any chance of burning on the bottom of the yeah. pan. And basically what I'm going to do is just reduce. I'm going to reduce the sauce to nappe until it beautifully coats coat the back the of the spoon. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or let's continue with the caramelized bananas. I'm going to turn this fire up just a little bit to help get that pan nice and nice and hot. Oh, in the meantime, delicious. I can get my bananas cut. Mm -hmm. We're going to start. We're going to have two bananas. Perfectly ripe yeah. or doesn't it make? I think that um, perfectly ripe to ensure sweetness. So I like to just cut the ends of my banana and cut the banana lengthwise. I'm going to just third the banana. So we'll end up with six pieces. Mm -hmm. okay, we've gotten our pan very hot. I'm going to add about half of our quarter cup of sugar, mm -hmm. so an eighth of a cup. I like to get a portion of my sugar caramelized oh. and then add the remainder to it just to ensure that there's no lumps and again in the even color. Just carefully spread this around mm -hmm. the surface of the pan which will help with the caramelize. You can actually you can start starting to melt yes, already. Mm -hmm. Well that really is melting isn't it? Yes, it starts to melt and you start to gain a little bit of color. As you see you start to get some very very yeah. light amber. Mm -hmm. I'm going to add the remainder of my sugar. This really I think prevents the lumping. Yeah, that's you see how that's you get a, that's very a even, good, huh? That's a good piece of advice. So once it starts to co come to color, oh, that really know, obviously it's going to come very quickly. So I, I'd like to, to just reduce the heat a little bit. As soon as you get the color that you're looking for, which is a, a medium dark amber, which is just about where we're at now, I'm going to add my tablespoon of butter. I'm just going to mix that mm -hmm. into the caramel. And this is going to help stop the cooking mm -hmm. of the caramel and, and of course add some wonderful it'll, flavor. It'll prevent it also from burning up, won't it? Yes. It'll... So we have this beautiful caramel color. I'm going to add my bananas at this time to it. A little bit of cream. A little bit of heavy cream. Yeah. 
about three tablespoons of cream, and I like to sometimes put that in two parts also. Mm -hmm. So you put too much of cold liquid into, you see how it starts, yeah, to, so starts to get, the sugar yeah. starts to coagulate, so mm -hmm. it will eventually melt back, but you can actually even warm your cream to add to a caramel, mm -hmm. which we're really making a caramel sauce and poaching our yes, bananas in a caramel sauce. Mm -hmm. So we've, we've reached now a very tender consistency, and mm -hmm. we're gonna check that by, by putting our fork in, it's gonna go yeah. in very, very easily. It's very soft. Mm -hmm. yeah. so at this point, I'd like to take our, my bananas and take them off the fire, and I'm gonna transfer them to my plate I have here. We're gonna allow that to cool. So our sauce is just about reduced. It certainly it, okay? has thickened up, hasn't yeah. it? A beautiful sauce consistency. Mm -hmm. You can basically just put this aside, allow it to come to room temperature. Mm -hmm. And then it'll thicken. And it will it? thicken a bit now that yeah. it's very, very, very mm -hmm. hot as it comes to room temperature and should be served just at room temperature, warm oh. in the mm -hmm. liquid state. Yeah. So we'll put this over to the side and mm -hmm. we'll allow it just to rest uh, until we assemble our dessert. Great. Looks as though we were ready to assemble the final phase of things. I think that we are. Good. I've taken the pastry cream back out of the refrigerator. Mm -hmm. That's cold now. It's nice and cold. I'm going to whisk the pastry cream a little bit just to smooth it back out. We're going to take our caramelized bananas, just carefully put them into our pastry and cream. Them all in. Yeah. Just carefully fold the two together. I don't want to mash my bananas. I mm -hmm. want to keep some pieces of the banana. You can see that the consistency has come back a little bit. Yeah. It's not as stiff as it was mm -hmm. because of the caramel that was mm -hmm. added, but still on the stiff side. Make a little bit of an egg wash. Egg wash will help seal our beignet and mm -hmm. ensure that our filling will stay inside mm -hmm. properly. We're just going to scramble our egg in just a splash of water, about a teaspoon. I brought with me a little, little toy that I found uh, being used in one of the other parts of the kitchen one day, and I thought, well, what a wonderful idea. This is a pot sticker press. Oh, you which know, we get in the Orient Little Grocery Store. Exactly, or, or, or possibly a gourmet store where. Yeah used in filling those little meat-filled dumplings that they... You use it for ravioli, too. Exactly. Yeah. So by taking one of our cut pieces of pâte choux, I can carefully put it inside mm -hmm. and take a tablespoon and some of our filling to ensure that we get not only pastry cream, but you know, some of the pieces of our banana. Mm -hmm. Put that in the center like that. Just a little less about a bare yeah. tablespoonful, yeah. isn't it? Approximately, yeah. yeah. And just lightly Really lightly egg wash our edge there. Mm -hmm. And just by simply taking our pot sticker press and sandwiching it together. That's really wonderful. That's great. You get a wonderful scalloped edge. That's very nice. And a very consistent sealed beignet. Yeah. Like a nice alternative. By using just a piece of dough mm -hmm. that we've used a crimped cutter and a, some light egg wash, take just a small Small bit, not too much, because as you as you fold over, you want to make sure that the filling stays in the center mm -hmm. and not seeps off the well, sides. Words, don't be greedy about the filling. <laughs> That's right. What I do then is just carefully with my finger seal the beignet. Mm -hmm. Let me take a cutter in the back of the cutter oh, that and, and just kind of lightly press, That's just a good to kind idea. of just to kind of seal. Yeah. Well, and then with a sharp, you know, knife or something flat edge, we can carefully lift up the beignet and then set the beignet back down. Mm -hmm. I'm going to cover our beignet with a piece of plastic. We're going to put these in the freezer. It can be up to, to one day, mm -hmm. uh, three or four hours it would be wonderful, mm -hmm. just so that they're frozen enough to handle and mm -hmm. that we're able to cook them quickly and that the filling doesn't get too hot in the interior. Good. I've preheated our vegetable oil to between 375 and 400. So let's take a couple of these beignets. Let's drop them carefully into the oil. What oil are you using? Personally, I, I like to use a canola, mm -hmm. canola oil, because oh. of the low saturated fat. Mm -hmm. But regular vegetable oil works wonderfully. And we're just looking for a nice, even color. Mm -hmm. you see that the beignets start to float to the surface as they start to gain color. So I try to turn some of the beignets to brown on the other side. Mm -hmm. So as our beignets start to brown nicely, it looks like it just need another few seconds. Mm -hmm. We're going to transfer them to a, a paper towel mm -hmm. so that any excess oil can be absorbed. Yeah. So, okay. Our triangles. And those are also frozen. These were frozen just to make them easier to handle. Yeah. I'm going 
going to lay it's right into the oil. What's interesting about this is that if you want to form your form your triangle, you can just mm -hmm. kind of put your spatula down into it mm -hmm. and press the dough right down mm -hmm. into the oil. Oh. Give it maybe a, a decorative bend to the. And I can see it's beginning to puff up. That's yeah. nice, isn't it? That's a fascinating look. That was that kind of puffiness. Kind of reminds me of the elephant ears from the from the county fair. Oh, yes. They used to take yeah. some fried dough and yeah. dust with powdered sugar when I was a kid. And that's browning nicely, yeah. isn't it? So by just putting that that, that uh, wire into it as it fried, it kind of gave it like a decorative mm -hmm. bend. It has an animalistic look, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. Some powdered sugar. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to lightly dust dust our beignet. I don't want to lose that beautiful brown color, but just mm. want to help enhance. Okay. So I think three is adequate for a portion. I like to kind of set them on our plate. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have some melted chocolate and a cornet, the mm -hmm. trusty cornet, a pastry no. chef's right hand, no. left hand. It's always close by. Well, we have illustrated how to make it in the book that goes along with this series. Oh, nice. And take a pair of scissors and a really fine hole, just so we oh. can let a very fine stream of chocolate. Mm -hmm. Just maybe kind of pipe a little bit of decor. Ooh, maybe some dots. That's very chic, isn't it? And maybe some graduated dots here. As with all of these things, practice before you attempt it. Okay. I'd like some maybe for some color. We could put some fresh fruit, and I have some mm -hmm. some strawberries. Take maybe a. Here, I fanned the strawberry. You can put a strawberry up here. A couple of nice fresh raspberries this time of the year. Wonderful raspberries. I'm gonna take some of our beautiful sauce. Just we can kind of put some of the beautiful walnut sauce. And I still mm. smell the aroma. It's mm. just really filling the air. Is that all the sauce? I mean, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> I think we could serve we could serve the dessert like that with some sauce and then sauce on the side on and then the some side. Sauce, some more sauce oh, yeah. on the side. <laughs> <laughs> we can just maybe garnish with just a little sprig of fresh mint. Mm -hmm. One of these decorations. I mean, we can oh. play around with that. There's really nothing correct in making dessert. It's we it's just do it with the spirit moves. I think so. So by just taking a piece of this. Maybe even just flowing like this, and just to add some yes. some movement movement uh -huh. to the plate. You could even, if you'd like, you know, a little bit of just touch touch with a little bit of sugar around the uh -huh. edge to to finish our dessert. No, I mean that's a wonderful dessert, and it's so nice to know that you can do something else with patachou. And I thank you very very much. Well, thank you very much, Julia, for inviting me into your kitchen. It's been uh, a pleasure. You will be welcome every day. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Bon appétit